So I've got a short one today on how to use Substance Painter, Substance 3D Painter uh, with Godot. So I've been tinkering a little bit with this uh, this morning. I have this model here that I created in Blender. Uh, it's nothing fancy. I'm just I'm just doing some testing more or less to see uh, you know how all this works. Um, but basically, what I have here is um, a model. I'll show you the model in Blender. So the model initially I modeled to have a bunch of different materials. And uh, in Blender, I had all those separated as materials, but um, that won't quite work in Substance Painter for having separate materials because when you bake it, it wants to create a whole separate texture set for each material. Uh, so the first thing I'll mention that might be useful is that you can actually do a, let's see if I can get this to work. You can actually bake your materials in Blender first to vertex colors. So these materials I had set up in Blender, uh, maybe I'll do a different video on this at some point, but if you have like, you know, three or four material slots here, um, and let's just say they're just colors, right? So in this case, I literally just had them set as these colors to differentiate the different parts of the model. Um, you can actually bake that to color attribute data. I just created one here called bake data. And uh, when you do that, I'll just show you, if you go to the bake tab, uh, you have to be in cycles, you come down to to the bake section, and then you can just bake diffuse, uh, only include color and bake active color attribute as the target. So when you bring that into Substance Painter here, um, you'll have to do what's called uh, baking mesh maps. And when you bake your mesh maps, include the ID, okay? So check the ID. And then when you you know do everything in Substance Painter, and for those of you who are familiar with Substance Painter, this will be obvious, but when you drag materials in, if you hold control, then you can drag materials onto the separate uh, parts of that mesh ID. And the beauty of this is that when you export your texture set, it all comes out as one texture set. So everything's baked. Now, what I should say, obviously from a model like this, you're gonna have to make sure that your you, none of your UVs are uh, overlapping. And that can be a whole challenge in and of itself just to get that to work. The other thing I wanted to say for the purposes of Godot is basically I want to use a PBR pipeline here, but I also want ambient occlusion. Uh, ambient occlusion just gives a really nice detail, especially around these interior kind of faces that are definitely darkened because of the, the shadowing, right? So to get that to work, when you go to file um, export, I created basically my own template. I probably should give it a name like Godot Blender. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that. And what you want to do is you're going to put your base color in an RGB channel, right? So you can just, you know, click RGB, then drag base color into it. It's basically how it works and create a normal channel with RGB from your normal. And then when you do your three channels for here, actually, I got to rename this. This is going to be ambient occlusion, roughness, and metal. So ambient occlusion, roughness, and metal. I found this random piece of software called Verge 3D that basically said the GLTF 2.0 standard requires that occlusion, roughness, and metal be packed in that order. Okay, so RGB, occlusion, roughness, metal. And then once that export template is set up, you will actually get your texture ep exports. I'll do it again right now. So if we export, and then when you come to your export folder, you get the appropriate channel. So we can see I have AO, uh, roughness, and metal packed into one image here, base color, and then the normal map. So on the Blender side, what I do is I take my model and I just add a new material to it. So I clear out all the materials that were maybe there before and I add a new material and you just have the principal BSDF. And then I press control shift T and that allows me to do a quick uh, principal BSDF setup. So the add on you want for this is the node wrangler. So if you just uh, search, so I, th I think I had it enabled here, but if you go to node wrangler, um, if I could type node wrangler, you just enable it right from blender. But anyway, so once you have that imported, it's not quite right because we need to separate color here on this guy. And based on what we said before, red is going to be ambient occlusion. Green is going to be roughness and blue is going to be metal. Now the ambient occlusion one is weird and I'm going to, I saw another video that goes through it, but I'll walk you through it again, just real quickly here. So, the easiest way to do it is, let's just call this GLTF settings X for a second. You drop in a new image texture and it's really just, this is kind of a hack, but you press control G, you delete the image texture, you go to your inputs, we're gonna delete all the inputs. 
you delete all the outputs and we make a new input and just call it occlusion. You have to spell it right, so it has to be O-C-C-L-U-S-I-O-N. And then you go up. Once that's done, you have to name the node group GLTF settings, GLTF space settings, all lowercase. It's, it's really wacky, but this actually works. So when you do that, I'm gonna take the red channel from that map and put it into occlusion. So once you have all this done, you just export the GLTF into Godot. And I'll show that. I'm using my add-on, but you don't need to use it. You can use whatever you want. Um, so let's say you have, I'm just gonna clear everything out here so it all comes in fresh. But I have basically this GLTF that I'm going to export. So if we export that. Everything comes in here. Uh, it's gonna do a bunch of texture detection stuff. And it should just work right out of the box and it looks like it did. Okay, so you kind of come to the oblique angles and you can see the, uh, the roughness for sure is in there and some of the metallic-iness uh, coming in. So that all looks good. Now the big thing I wanted to make sure that, absolutely make sure it works, is the ambient occlusion. So just to test that real quick, and I don't need to do this, but for the purposes of testing I can. I'm gonna make local my import, and then we do make unique on that. I'm gonna make unique the material and then we're gonna come look at this. So it looks like it pulled it from the red channel, so that's right. Um, the roughness was green and the metallic is blue. So everything is good. There might be one little hang up here. If you come to albedo uh, or vertex color, it says use as albedo, which we actually don't want. And I think it's pulling that because we have some color attributes in Blender for the vertex colors. I think that's the only reason it, it does that. But if I turn ambient occlusion off, you can see the difference, right? So there's definitely some self-shadowing that should be happening here. Um, and ambient occlusion, if I turn that on, then that works. That looks pretty good. It's working a lot better. Um, maybe what does it look like from this side? We'll see. Yeah, so the, that gives more accurate kind of lighting for the model. So anyways, I wanted to do this quick video. Uh, it's a nice little workflow that you can set up for yourself using Blender, Godot, and Substance Painter. So I just thought I would throw that one together. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.